Good afternoon, folks. We are about two days out from training camp, and that means that things can happen. And uh, for the Vancouver Canucks, things needed to happen, uh, being well over the cap uh, with Tanner Pearson and Ilya Mikheyev, both able to likely return to the lineup in time for the regular season. Canucks just had too many players, and they had to make some sort of move. Uh, and we had rumored for a long time, and, and we talked about this at length on Canucks After Dark last night, um, it was most likely going to have to be a winger. The Canucks had a glut of wingers. Uh, and if you take a look at daily faceoff, you can see that. You can see they got Bavillier, Mikheyev, Kuzmenko, Besser, Garland, and Tanner Pearson. Um, and then not to mention the guys who are sitting outside of this lineup. Uh, you know, guys like Phil DiGiuseppe, even though you know, he's on this list here. Uh, Vizley Bog Colson, Niels Hoaglander, Sheldon Dry, a bunch of names uh, that uh, essentially is a big log jam. So the Canucks needed to move one of them. Uh, and that guy happens to be Tanner Pearson. Tanner Pearson, a, a, an upcoming unrestricted free agent, uh, making, I believe, three and a quarter um, this season. Um, the Canucks move on from Tanner Pearson, clearing up some cap space in the process. Now, what is the return for Tanner Pearson? It is a Tanner Pearson and a 2025 third round pick. Now, okay, here are the Canucks trading away draft picks to clear up cap space. They did this last year uh, with Jason Dickinson um, uh, in the Riley Stillman trade, which was atrocious. Um, and now here they are trading uh, another third round pick. However, again, third round picks essentially meaningless <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, right? They're lottery tickets and, and they're lottery tickets that sometimes uh, hit value, but for the most part, don't. Um, in return, the Canucks get Casey DeSmith, a backup goaltender, which is also something we talked about on Canucks After Dark last night. Uh, we we had this long discussion about what battles we're the most interested in. Are we most interested in the battle for who takes the sort of seventh and eighth winger spots, right? The fourth line winger spots, because there was sort of, you know, there's sort of six wingers that are uh, six, maybe seven wingers with Tanner Pearson that you know are going to be in the opening day lineup. Um well, the Canucks sort of answer that here. They get rid of Tanner Pearson. They add another winger slot available in the lineup, which we will get to. Another one of the battles we talked about was for backup goaltender. Now, Thatcher Demko, obvious number one. And then number two, we talked at length about, you know, the discrepancy between Spencer Martin, who we saw last year wasn't as good as advertised uh, as we had hoped he would be, right? He struggled last year, and especially when Demko went down, there was a big hole that uh, Spencer Martin was in, unable to fill. So my thought was that a guy like Archer Silovs would be able to come up and actually push for that spot because his development is less important to the Vancouver Canucks, I have to imagine, than being a playoff team this year with Elias Patterson's extension uh, sort of in the balance there. So the Canucks solve that problem here too, picking up 32-year-old goaltender Casey DeSmith. Now, first off, let's talk about Tanner Pearson. What are the Habs getting? Um, we'll, we'll touch on this shortly. I mean, he only played 14 games last year, had the hand slash wrist injury. Uh, I think it was hand. Um, but he, he's been historically a 40 point guy, right? 34 points in 68 games in the 2022 season. Uh, in his first full season with the Canucks, he had 45 points in 69 games. Um, and for his contract, for the dollars he was making, which was about, yeah, three and a quarter, serviceable. However, the Canucks have so many overpaid wingers, and wingers have such little to no value at this point. He's an upcoming UFA. The odds of the Canucks keeping him around next year, absolutely slim, in my opinion. So they cut bait with Tanner Pearson, which allows them to keep guys like Connor Garland, Brock Besser, Anthony Bavillier. If you were going to get rid of one of them, it seemed like Bavillier was kind of the odd man out, having less history with the team. Uh, but I'm not surprised to see it uh, be Tanner Pearson. Uh, and I think, you know, Bavillier, I think, is better than Tanner Pearson. And Garland is better than Tanner Pearson. And Brock Besser can be better than Tanner Pearson. So I'm okay from a strict, you know, what did the Canucks lose perspective? It being Tanner Pearson, that works just fine for me. What are the Canucks getting in return? Casey DeSmith, uh, analytically, um, or at least, you know, in comparison to other goalies, uh, pretty good. 75th percentile uh, projected for wins above replacement uh, uh, via this JFresh card. Uh, but we can always pull up the old hockey DB. He's only played in five NHL seasons, only 134 NHL games. Career save percentage of 912. Last year, he played 38 games for the Pens. 905 save percentage. It was his worst year ever. Um, but it's also the most he played. The previous year, he played 26 games in a backup role. He had a 914. The year before that, 912. 
Uh, two years before that, in 2018, 2019, he played 36 games with the 916. So if he can go back to, you know, there's a, there's a clear outlier here of all these years. It was last year. Um, if he can go back to being a 908 guy, even if he's a 905 guy, that's a big upgrade at backup goalie. Uh, also, the other big upgrade here is the cap hit. Uh, his cap hit is $1.8 million. Keep in mind, you are also, you know, trading Tanner Pearson for Casey DeSmith clears up about one and a half million at that point. Uh, but you're also sending down Spencer Martin and uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there, but then you're calling up one other winger. Essentially, you're clearing up uh, a decent enough chunk of change for Casey DeSmith. This is a, a thing that I think the Canucks needed to do. You know, we, we've talked about how the backup goalie scenario hasn't gone well, right? Where they brought in Yara Halak and that didn't really work. Spencer Martin was a, was a nice, you know, boon in his short little stint a couple of years ago. Last year, he was the backup and he wasn't able to hold his own when Demko went down. When you're talking about a team like the Vancouver Canucks that are really on the edge of a playoff spot. I mean, most, you know, betting uh, odds uh, books and uh, analytics providers would say the Canucks are about a 50-50 bet. To make the playoffs this year same as last year when we came into the season last year and i think that's pretty fair well would you rather have spencer martin who put up a, i think an eight something last year i mean let's let's pull up his uh, let's pull up his card here spencer martin spencer martin put up a, an 871 across 29 games last year right his career average is 885 and he is 28 years old it's not like he's young um you know he's 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 sort of the player he's going to be to go from that on a guy who might play 29 games, right? If you're going to have Demko start, let's say 57, and then your backup starts 25, or God forbid some sort of injury happens, would you rather Spencer Martin step in or would you rather Casey DeSmith step in? This seems like a no-brainer. Of course, it could go wrong. He could be bad. It's possible. Um, but Tanner Pearson could have been bad also. So essentially, in my books, the Canucks trade away Tanner Pearson, who probably would have slotted in on the third line if we're looking at this lineup, right? We're probably thinking Mikheyev up here with Pedersen and Kuzmenko, Bavillier, Miller, Besser, and then you would have had Garland with Pew Suter and probably Tanner Pearson. But getting rid of Tanner Pearson now allows someone, maybe you have Vasily Podkolzin stepping up to that role. Maybe you have Dakota Joshua stepping up to that role. Niels Hoaglander, um, you know, the list can go on. That, to me, doesn't seem like as much of a downgrade as going from Spencer Martin to Casey DeSmith as your backup for potentially 27 to 30 appearances uh, is a boon for the team. So the Canucks were cap strapped. Where are they now? Oh, they're still cap strapped. Projected cap hit $85.5 million. Keep in mind the cap uh, the salary cap is lower than that number, but the Canucks are about $2 million over the cap. However, the Canucks have uh, good old Tucker Pullman Two and a half million dollars on LTIR and the Vancouver Canucks with 22 players on their roster. Uh, so I guess they're one short. But the Vancouver Canucks are officially going to be $500,000 below the cap after using LTIR. The Canucks will be cap compliant on opening night if they make no other moves. I think the team gets better from this move. Genuinely, the, the team is better than it was an hour ago. Um, and what it cost was a 2025 third round pick. I'm all for it. Let's ride, baby. The Canucks training camp starts in a couple of days. I'll keep you covered right here. Make sure you subscribe, hit like, do all that good stuff. Uh, we got post games all throughout the year, hopefully. So make sure you stay tuned if the team is good. Uh, probably going to be doing some video, some stream. We'll see what happens, but make sure you keep it locked right here. Uh, you can also watch Canucks After Dark last night's episode uh, wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube at Canucks After Dark. Thank you all very much for joining me. And I'll see you next time.